Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. Jamie Lerner, a therapist with an MSW from Loyola University, passionately embodies the teachings of Abraham by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Known for her integrative approach to well-being, Jamie excels in helping clients foster self-love. Besides her professional pursuits, she is an avid equestrian on the AA horse show circuit and describes herself as the pleasure junkie. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> With a zest for beauty and joy. Yeah, so I am talking to the right person then today. <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for being on my show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on today. Thank you. Yeah, so your book, and I I, I forget who is the co, co-author as well. What is her name? So her name is Lauren Tarr. Lauren Tarr, yes. yes. So it's the book is called Ever Loving Essence of You. And what a beautiful t- title that is. And that encourages readers to have a love af- a love affair with themselves, I should say, right? Yes. <laughs> Could you share more about what sparked that that idea and how how you hope to impact your readers? So um when I was born, I was born with a knowing. And um, I was very connected to myself, but but I didn't have a connection with my mom. And it was really hard for me to understand how I could be so connected with myself and yet not to have this emotional connection with this amazing woman that brought me into this world. And it took me half my life to really figure that out. And um, I think that when she was... um, hospitalized and intubated um, and was really in a kind of like a coma. I sat with her and felt all the love pour from her through me. And I thought, wow, this is the beginning of our mother and daughter relationship. And then she transitioned. And what I realized was that my mother, who was a force of nature and believed there was 48 hours in every day, Um, she sidestepped the most important relationship, which was the relationship with herself. And it is only with the connection of ourselves that we are truly able to connect with others. So I felt like this was really important to write about and speak about because I think that we don't really understand that the connection with ourselves is the foundation and the basis for every other connection we go on to have or not. So the ever loving essence of you is really a tribute to my relationship with my mom. And um, it really helped me understand so many things. So I'm very appreciative for that relationship with her or lack of. Yes. And thank you so much for sharing that reminds me of my mother and her relationship with her mother. Growing up, I didn't have a grandma on my dad's side. Well, my dad was murdered when I was a baby and his parents passed away when I was a baby as well. So I didn't have that relationship with that, nor did I have a relationship with my mom's mom because she didn't have a relationship with her mom. So I didn't have a grandma growing up. Um, Her name is Grandma Roberta, called Grandma Bobby. And it wasn't until later on that my mom was, you know, getting older and Grandma Bobby was getting older and then she wasn't well anymore. She went to go visit her often and her at her caretaker's home and they were just sharing stories. She was loving her. And I think there was a moment of forgiveness, I want to say. And then she did transition. She was in her 90s. But that brought me so much joy in my in my heart because I'm like, oh, my goodness, they finally connected because holidays were horrible. Like, you know, my aunt, my mom's sister would go ahead and bring, you know, my grandma over without invitation from my mom to our home when we're having like Christmas or, you know, who knows, Easter. (laughs) And she'd be like, what's going on? So just for them to rekindle and just forgive and just love on each other. That's beautiful. So it totally reminded me of my my mom and her mom's story. So thank you so much for sharing that. That And it is true. It is very important that we start building a relationship with ourselves and then we can connect with everybody else. And I think our the most important relationship is ourselves, <laughs> is with ourselves, right? Yes. yes, but we tend to look outside of ourselves to others to give us what we actually need to give ourselves. So this book is a very loving reminder of all the ways that we can begin to do this for ourselves 
with ourselves and how that benefits everybody else that we end up connecting with. Right. Now, in your book, you discuss reconnecting with oneself. Um, can you go ahead and elaborate on some strategies or even some practices that someone can start today to foster this deep connection with their inner self? So I think just sitting with ourselves the first few minutes of the day or whenever that would be, that would be quiet time. And to just ask yourself, what is the one thing that you really appreciate about you? Not what someone else appreciates about you, but what do you really appreciate about you? And it really could be anything. And I think that kind of sets the tone for us to begin to look inward for appreciation of ourselves, because we are always looking outside of ourselves for that. And we're always disappointed. And even when we get it, it doesn't sustain us because it's an inside job. The journey inward is always important than the journey outward. Yeah, I've heard that. Yes. And the journey inward doesn't have to be scary. And you don't have to worry because your inner being, inner knowing loves you all the time. But we tend to cut ourselves off from that inner knowing voice. And we get so caught up in looking outside of that for validation. And I think that's when problems begin. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because they're <laughs> lies. Because <laughs> they're lies, right? <laughs> they're lies. And about the knowing, you do, everyone has that knowing. It's about trusting yourself and then giving yourself that love and compassion and forgiveness, too, because, you know, Definitely. sometimes we hate on ourselves <laughs> and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, quick story about my background. You know, I used to be an alcoholic no longer anymore. Uh, when I became sober, I really started learning how to trust my inner voice, that inner guidance and to go with that instead of hearing what the naysayers have to say or, you know, what even family members are trying to influence me. It's like I really had to go within hence my show, Shine Within, <laughs> to, uh, to actually become who I truly am as a spiritual being. And once I've discovered who she is, we're just best friends. And <laughs> she's yeah. rooting for me every day. <laughs> Absolutely. And I ask people to remember all the times that they knew for themselves, but they didn't know how, how or why. And they chose not to listen to themselves. And then they said, I should have listened to myself. Because I've never heard anyone say, I should not have listened to myself. So we have intuition and our intuition is available to us at all times. Even if we're choosing not to go with it or listen to it, we have to acknowledge that it's there and it never goes away. So to begin to tap into that and really trust it and believe it, I think is um, a, a great gift we can give to ourselves. Absolutely. Now you actually incorporate the teachings of Abraham by Esther and Jerry Hicks into your life and work. Um, how actually have these teachings influenced your approach to therapy and self-development? So it's influenced everything about what I'm doing. And I was psychotherapist before, and now I'm just a well-being therapist. And so I assist people in assisting themselves because I believe that we have the power and inner knowing to have every answer that we need for ourselves when we look within. And we can do it with humor and levity and have fun with it. And it doesn't have to be something that's hard and difficult and judgmental. And um, I think that's really nice to give people permission, the opportunity to explore that. Yes. And as a therapist with a rich background in various spiritual healing modalities, how do you blend these practices into your integrative approach to enhance well-being for your clients? Well, a lot of it comes from giving people permission. Most people need permission from a helping professional to know themselves, to trust themselves, to love themselves. And we don't hear that very often. Most therapy is about looking back. And I don't really believe that there is anything to look back on unless you're going to identify a superpower that you obtained out of that, which I think we all have, no matter what we've been through. 
I think we have all gotten something amazing, an amazing strength from that period of time. So to go back and not to blame anyone, but just to say, wow, with all that contrast, look where I am now. And this is amazing. Yeah, I've noticed that when I do look at my past, I'm actually grateful for the experiences that I've had because that is exactly who shaped me to talk to you right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I, I'm grateful for them. I don't, I used to have that victim mentality where it's like, oh, I am, this happened to me because so and so did this. I used to be that way and no longer because that victim mentality is a choice. You can either choose to not be that and choose to become, or choose to become victorious from that and just live a life that you can create for yourself because I believe shine within. And shine within. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and shine within. Because once you shine within, everyone thinks you're shining without like <laughs> they can see it and then they want it for themselves. And they'll ask you, how did you do it? Well, listen to yourself, listen to your yeah. gut. You can start with that. Um, that is your intuition as well. And you can those goosebumps that come up when you're thinking something, those that's like truth bumps, you know, it's like, Hey, a nudge, nudge. Hey, Hey, pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So you often describe yourself as a pleasure junkie. Like I am a big pleasure junkie too. I love always doing things that bring me pleasure. Um, how has this pursuit of pleasure and beauty shaped your personal and personal life and professional well, life? <laughs> you know, I think I've always been a pleasure junkie and the work of Abraham was like the most unbelievable permission to stay on that track because they really do believe that when you feel good, then anything is possible. And you get hooked on feeling good. You know, you get so good at managing your thoughts and your feelings that it's not an option anymore to have a negative feeling or thought. And when you do, you're able to redirect it into something that translates into right here and now. So, a lot of their work is just a lot of common sense and it's so easy, but it's almost too easy because people don't believe it, but it definitely works. And it's a lot of fun. You know, do you know uh, the work, the teachings of Esther Hicks? No, I don't. That's why I was okay. curious. <laughs> well, you would, you would probably really enjoy it because it's really all about being enjoyed all the time. And when you are in joy, literally your life is transformed and things that you are wanting, you're able to create for yourself with ease. So, yeah. Yes. And joy, I, there's flow when it comes with, when you have joy, there's flow in life and everything just kind of, it's like a fluid is the word. Yes. Everything's fluid yes. and it kind of like goes, I mean, of course we'll still have our challenges, but we respond to them differently. At least for myself, I used to respond negatively to all challenges, but like, ah, now I'm like, bring it on, baby. Let's go. Let's see what this, <laughs> <laughs> what this challenge well, is all about. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're talking about reacting. You no longer react. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, you are able to be more thoughtful about it. And then, you know, uh, yeah. Which feels a whole lot better too. So yeah, and being involved in equestrian sports, like I love horses. I want to own one. Do you have one, by the way? So I've owned many, many horses, and I've also had to put down many horses. So right now, I am never going to have horses of my own again. So I share board horses, which means that I ride other people's horses, which is easier for me because you get quite attached to these partners they are partners you know we we jump around and you know uh, with them and it's it's a very special connection and bond that you create with animals even with dogs you know so uh no i i am at the point where i am not interested in owning anything with a heartbeat so it's so devastating like are we even just lost our goldfish recently and i'm like <laughs> broken yeah. <laughs> like oh, oh, you know and i never had fish before well hopefully that fish lived a long time <laughs> did it, well two years i don't know how that's the long for okay. a goldfish. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting a lot of love then in the household yeah. 
Um, I was going to go ahead and ask, how has horse riding influenced your sense of well-being just overall? Because I eventually want horses, but like after just talking to you, I'm like, maybe I should do what you're doing currently and just kind of, you you know, go ahead and ride the horses and then give them back. (laughs) Because, yeah. Um, so for me, I feel like in many ways, that's my lifeline. Like I ride as many days of the week that I can and jump as many days of the week as I can, because I love being with horses and creating partnership with them. It's really special. Um, yeah. And I think it's either in you or it isn't, you know, horses are not for everyone, but if it's in you and you're even curious about it, you should just go check it out because yeah, it becomes a very consuming passion. Yes, yes. I heard it costs for maintenance for a horse like $30,000 a year or maybe more. I'm not sure. Well, there's many different kinds of horses and many different kinds of maintenance, but they are very large animals and they eat a lot and they require a lot of care. And, you know, cost is always a consideration, but there are so many ways to enjoy the sport and you don't necessarily have to own a horse to enjoy it and to learn and to create a partnership so my very first horse ride I was like the third wheel with my on my sister's date I think she was like 21 or so or 20 and then my mom she's 10 years older than me by the way and then my mom's like well you're going to go on a date you got to take your little sister oh wow and so her boyfriend had taken us on a nice horse ride on the beach Oh, and fun. that was a beautiful experience. And I'm just like, I fell in love with horses since then. I'm like, oh, so anytime I get an opportunity to ride a horse when we're on vacation or somewhere, I will take it because it's so much great. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking about that. Yeah, Amazing animals. Truly, they are. Yes. Yeah. So the ever loving essence of you includes different tools of joyous living. And I know we talked a little bit about some of those tools, but can you go ahead and share more tools that actually listeners may find particularly helpful in their own transformation? So I think that if you are going to think about something that happened in the past, if you could think about it from your right here and now perspective, because you're an adult, you're not a small child anymore. And I think that the way you would think about it today would be very different and more relevant to your life right now. And part of that is not sidestepping the emotional content, but kind of quieting the emotional content and making it more about the logistics. And then with that, I think forgiveness comes first of yourself and then of whoever and whatever, all of that, that had happened. But the real gift is appreciation. Because once again, like you said, you would not be who you are today if it wasn't for all of those things that happened, not necessarily happened to you, but just happened. And so I think that when we get to that place, we really step into our personal power and we feel like we have control of our life and we are the creators of it every single moment of it. That's a good feeling. It is. I often always say on my podcast that we are the directors, writers, producers, actors, we're everything. This is our story. We're the most important project we'll ever work on is ourselves. And I think there's there's always room to grow. Like I love learning every day. Now we'll go ahead and check out (laughs) the teachings of Abraham. Yeah. (laughs) I think you'll really like it. Yeah. I love learning. Yeah. Yeah. So throughout your travels and studies, you've explored a wide range of spiritual healing practices. Are there any particular experience that actually stand out to you particularly that influenced you in your, in your personal life? I'm very difficult to influence because I am very clear. I am not a seeker. I am a knower, but only for myself. And we can only know for ourselves. We cannot know for another. Yet most people, they know for everybody else and they don't really know anything for themselves. So I tend to gravitate towards practices that really highlight personal responsibility and self-care and not turning myself over to some guru or professional or someone that believes that they would know better for me than me because nobody knows better for you than you. 
nobody. It's true. Just recently, you know, when my, my kids cry, well, when I was crying as a little girl, I was always told, don't cry, don't cry. But when my kids cry now, I'm just like, cry, you know, this is, or your emotions, who am I to tell you how you're supposed to feel? These are your own feelings. I always remind them that these are your feelings, not mine. I can't tell you, stop crying. You're meant to cry. You got to cry. Like I had a good cry just yesterday. Nobody in the household told me, stop crying, mom. They're just give That's me hugs good. and kisses. <laughs> That's good. And, you know, I think crying and laughing are the same emotion, you know? Yes. So, yeah, it, I think it's really important to allow our children to be who they are and where they are, which I think um, is difficult for parents often. So true. And that's why I was telling my husband recently, like, I'm, I'm breaking this generational trauma chain here. I was going to, I'm breaking it. That's it. No more. You know, my mom was getting better because her mom abused her growing up. And, you know, of course I got the random spankings in the belt, the chancla, the slipper, you know, and <laughs> when we get in trouble, but I wasn't like abused. She's a very loving mother and I, I love her to death. She's my mom. <laughs> but uh, with my children now, I mean, all I have to do is like look at them and they put themselves out on time out for themselves. I don't have to say nothing. <laughs> they just know they have that knowing like, Whoa. <laughs> mom is not too happy right now. I think I'll better take myself out. <laughs> and then we talk about it afterward and it's beautiful. And, and we just love on each other afterwards. So you're really encouraging them to look in and to create self-regulation, which is amazing. You know, it's a gift that you are giving your children, the gift of knowing themselves without it being about how you feel about what they're doing. So uh, that's great. Yeah, I'll tell you another story. So when my son, well, he's eight now, but ever since he was maybe one or two, I read this book. Uh, I think it was called Monsters of the Sea, and it was about the giant squid. And he was fascinated by the book. But since then, he, to this day, loves the giant squid. So when he was four years old and we were during COVID time, we went ahead and I had him give me an oral report about the difference between the colossal squid and then the regular squid. And he was having a blast and talking about it. But I'd love to give him that space just to be using the creative mind and get excited. Like it brings me excitement when I see them excited about something. I'm like, yay. And then we yeah. just go with it more. So we're just really focused on marine biology in this household. That's great. Because <laughs> that's, that's what that, he loves. That's wonderful. It really is. Yeah. So Jamie, I want to go ahead and ask you where our listeners can go ahead and find you on your website or where they can find you on social media, all that good stuff. So I do have a website. It's www.jamie-lernr. And there's tons of information on there. And uh, Ever Loving Essence of You is available on Amazon. And I post or I try to post a uh, positive, uplifting message on Facebook every day. Instagram, I'm a total failure, and it's okay. I cannot keep up, but <laughs> <laughs> I know I know the feeling. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Yes, and so I will have everything there for you in the show notes, listeners. So please contact Jamie. She's definitely inspiring me and bringing me joy in my life by talking to her. Uh, but finally, for someone who's listening today who might be struggling with self love or finding joy in their daily life, uh, what would you, what would be the key piece or advice you would give them to help them begin their journey towards a more joyful living? To be gentle with yourself, to give yourself all the things that you are wishing either you had gotten from another or wishing that you would get from another because you are so important and you really matter and you are so worth your own love. Beautiful. So true. So true. Well, thank you so much again, Jamie, for being on my show. I had an amazing time talking with you today. Thank you for inviting me.